Hey folks, uh, welcome back to NC State and Dendrology. Um, in this video, we'll be talking about our winged elm, our cork elm, or wahoo. Um, its scientific name is Ulmus alata, um, and alata means winged, referring to the corky wings on most of the twigs. So I've come up close to this young um, sapling of this tree. Um, they can get much larger. I'll show you a larger, uh, mature one of these trees in a second. Um, but this is the best one to get a good look at those leaves and the stems, um, which are what you're going to really use to help identify this tree. So looking at this plant, the most distinctive thing um, about it, and the reason it's called a winged elm, is because it has these corky protrusions all the way along the stem. Let me get a better look at that. Oh, hello. Little daddy long leg. But you can see those corky protrusions um, that the daddy long leg is sitting on. And those are actually... Um, where the plant gets its name from. Um, they look like little wings all the way along the stem and you'll see these especially on very young um, branches or young trees of Ulmus alata. When we look at their leaves, um, we've got that typical elm shape in that they have um, that doubly serrated margin on the leaf. They're elliptical with that strongly pinnate venation and they can kind of look like they have either a slightly chordate um, to oblique base um, where one side is a little bit larger than the other. Um, these leaves tend to be a little bit smaller than our other elms. Not quite as small as our Chinese elm, but if we look at them, they tend to be about one to three inches in length. Um, and they will never get quite as large as our American elm or our um, Ulmus rubra. When we look um, at the leaves, they tend to be a very dark green. Um, they're kind of shiny on the top, and that's um, partially because they're glabrous on the top of the leaf. So if you feel the leaf, it'll be glabrous roughly on the top. On the back, you'll feel a little bit of hairs. Um, sometimes it can have a little bit of a scabrous texture to those leaves. Um, but that the most distinctive thing about it is those corky um, wings on the stems of the plant. Now let's go over and look at a mature tree. Here I found a mature example of um, Ulmus alata. We can look at it to see its bark. Um, there's a little bit of a epicormic branch coming out of it um, with some more of those leaves so you can definitely tell that it is almost a lot of from the size and shape of those leaves um, but I can also tell um, looking at the bark you've got sort of that um, tightly um, ridged bark that sort of has those flat ridges it tends to be a brownish gray color all the way up the tree and then we see that this can get to be a fairly large tree um, usually medium sized um, and it can um, get up there into the canopy a bit. Um, so it's often a mid-story um, to upper mid-story um, tree that you'll see in the canopy of our forests. Um, it's a pretty generalist tree, so I'll see it in a lot of rocky uplands, but I'll also see it down in floodplains, depending on where I am in the landscape. But here in the rocky uplands are where I tend to see the largest of these trees. You can see it kind of has that vase-like form, like a lot of our elms, where the branches are decurrent and spread outwards um, up into the canopy. And then we have that bark um, and those leaves. On older trees like this, you won't expect to see as much of that winging on the branches. Um, as they mature, they tend to lose that, but you'll see it occasionally on some of the sun branches. Um, but it's more typical on juvenile le uh, leaves and sun stems on the tree. But even without those wings, you can tell based off of those leaves and the bark itself. So yeah, that is Olmus alata, our winged elm.